Thank you for joining us. My name is Carrie Smith, and on behalf of Dell and Cumulus Networks, I'd like to welcome you to Open Networking in the Software Defined Data Center. Presenting today will be Tom Burns, Vice President and General Manager at Dell Networking, and GR Rivers, Co-Founder and CEO at Cumulus Network. Moderating the webinar will be Larry Hart. He's responsible for Dell Alliances at Cumulus Networks. The webinar will be about 30 to 45 minutes. We will answer a few questions from the participants at the end if time permits. For those of you interested, you have the opportunity to ask questions during the webinar by using the window marked Questions. Simply type in your question and click Send. You can also tweet your questions to us, and our Twitter handle is at Cumulus Networks. And with that, I'd like to turn this over to Larry. Thanks, Kerry. Hello, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Larry Hart, and as Kerry mentioned, I'm responsible for the Dell Alliance at Cumulus Networks. We're here to talk a bit about how open networking fits into this emerging ecosystem called the Software Defined Data Center. I'm joined today by Tom Burns, who is the Vice President of Dell Networking and Enterprise Infrastructure, and J.R. Rivers, who is the CEO and co-founder of Cumulus Networks. Hello, gentlemen, and welcome to the webinar. Hello. Thanks for having me. Hey, Larry. You may be wondering, uh, good, <laughs> hello, J.R. You may be wondering why Dell and Cumulus Networks are having a webinar together. Well, it's, it's quite simple. It's simply because the two companies share a common vision. Back in January of this year, Dell and Cumulus Networks realized they had the same goal, to disrupt the data center networking market by giving customers a choice of network operating systems, hardware, and software that works best for them. And, and kind of like they say, great minds think alike, and, and when we realized we had the same shared vision, we thought that a partnership was in due course. Now, open networking is an important element of the software-defined data center. The technology itself has been rapidly identified as a key technology that will better enable organizations of all sizes to achieve the affordable capacity and even operational efficiencies that the world's largest cloud operators enjoy today. Additionally, these technologies enable innovation. They allow enterprises to deliver a richer networking environment and in many ways reducing both CapEx and OpEx at the same time. So we're planning to discuss a number of topics that we believe will provoke some strategic thinking on your part. For example, we'll talk about major data center challenges and how you address them, uh, the current state of enterprise-ready software-defined data center technologies and how they can enable your business for future growth, how you might modernize the data center infrastructure to be aligned with business objectives, and even perhaps how you can better promote interaction between silos in your IT organization. So I know everyone is looking for advice on building their next generation data center, but I think they're even more ready to hear from Tom and JR about this important topic. So why don't we go ahead and get this thing started? So when you think about the open networking environment and you think about the software data center, um, it becomes this, this question of how do the two really fit into the same type of framework. So JR, I was hoping maybe you could share with us a little bit about how those two come together. So the fundamental premise of, of a software-defined data center is, is one in which uh, a customer is able to go off and acquire a set of roughly industry standard hardware, install it, and feel confident that through their life cycle of their use of that, that hardware, they're able to innovate at pace based on installations of new and upgraded or perhaps even different software than what they originally started off with. Um, if you roll back in time, quite, you know, it used to be that you would buy a computer from, you know, back in the mainframe days, you'd buy it from IBM with IBM applications, IBM everything. And that was, that was a, a effectively a massive single vendor blob that defined the functionality of your whole data center. If you look at the way the modern megascale data centers get deployed today, they go off and they buy very consistent replicable hardware, and they put a, a broad variety of applications on top of it. Some of them are homegrown themselves. Some of them are, are customer applications. And they, they run that with, with, on very common infrastructure. That allows them to be phenomenally agile in, in their business as well as maintain their operational expenses. 
All right, and Tom, when you look at this, this entire framework of Software Defined Data Center, uh, Dell has been at the forefront of the open networking initiative. You guys launched this. You were first in, in the industry to do this. H how do you see the two fitting together? Well, I, I think important factor is kind of looking at the definitions of what is Software Defined Data Center and what is open networking. And you'll find some commonality. Let me try to highlight that. So, you know, from my view, the, the Tom Burns definition of Software Defined Data Center is basically giving customers the capability to have more flexibility, more speed, more capability to become services and user focused versus box and siloed focused in the traditional server storage networking. You know, kind of moving to virtual software anytime real time changes versus you know, the physical hardware and management that comes with that. So you know, software defined is about speed and agility. If you look at open and, and kind of what Dell has led for over 30 years now, it's about taking the complexity out of technology and making it simple by basing its hardware on open, standards-based, commercially available, multi-vendor available type of hardware, uh, which obviously brings competitive pricing, standards around design, uh, but also again capitalizing for the customer flexibility, agility, and cost savings. So when you bring the two together, you have something that brings forth to the customer flexibility, speed, and capability. Uh, it allows them to do much more at a software level versus the physical hardware level. And over time, be, you know, starts to bring across these silos of service storage and networking to be more of a platform that's more easily managed by common standards-based tools that are you know, consistent across the three boxes, so to speak. So I, I think there's common terms and definitions in both, uh, and the objectives are clear. Speed, flexibility, and the capability to focus on services versus boxes. That's great. So when you think about these, these capabilities you're enabling, flexibility, agility, speed, and deployment, and, and beginning to break down these silos, Dell has really embraced partnerships like this one with Cumulus Networks. And, and de you're delivering this software-defined technology to a broad customer base. And, and as you think about kind of the legacy of Michael Dell and, and what he brings to this company where he started uh, the, the entire environment here, why in your mind is this really important to customers? Well, I think it's, it's important for a couple of things. The first is, is Dell has always been around choice. You know, we have never forced a particular solution down any customer's throat because it's a full Dell IP solution, uh, and as a result, it's obviously best for the customer. Every environment, uh, every vertical market, uh, every size of customer may have particular needs. So, you know, there's always been this this belief within the core of Dell to give customers choice, which is what we're doing here in the Open Networking Initiative and the relationship with with Cumulus. The second thing is to capitalize on the changes in technology. And just as Michael did with personal computing and Dell did you know, from mainframe to server, we're at a state now where networking, the technology base of you know, the ASICs, uh, the, the architectural design of the hardware, it's very commonly practiced and accepted, and the technology is ready for this disruption to disaggregate and to give customers that choice. So JR, when you think about Tom's comments around choice and capitalizing on these changes in, in the overall marketplace, um, obviously Cumulus has the opportunity to partner with various uh, other uh, folks in the industry. What, 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 is it, what is the value you see in partnering with a company like Dell? Well, I want to before we get to that, I'd like to kind of go back and reemphasize some of the points that, that Tom made. You know, it's history has shown us that it's impossible for any one company to solve. Uh, a, a very broad set of problems, it's kind of all-encompassing. Um, it's, it's very hard to organize the forces. It's very expensive to have very many, a lot of different development teams. And by creating an environment like what Dell's done around open networking, they've told the world, we don't have to solve all the world's problems, but we can get the solutions to your problem to you in a meaningful way. And, and that's why I think it's so important to customers. Right. You know, as Tom pointed out around the hardware, the hardware itself has become pretty consistent throughout all of the industry. 
the, 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 the look and feel, the capabilities and characteristics of the various software solutions um, are pretty disparate still and will likely continue to be that way for a while. So now it allows a customer to pick up the right software solution for their networking platform that makes sense for them in their environment. And so, I mean, it's, I think it was incredibly brave but also foresightful of Dell to recognize that, that this would be, you know, in line with what customers would want and need so far ahead of the rest of the industry. Right. So, so basically you're suggesting Dell is a bit of a visionary in this space and leading the industry, and, and that's why a partnership like this that, that makes all the sense in the world. It, it does. And, I mean, it, kind of the, the inside scoop on this whole thing is it's, it, you know, in a partnership like this, especially with, with the, the big step that Dell made here, you might – uh, I worked at, at a large networking company for a very long time, and they were very hesitant to do things that might open up an ecosystem. Um, the, the Dell team was exactly inverted. They, they recognized the opportunity. They recognized the situation and how it might affect customers long term, and they said, we have to go here. We have to structurally change, and we embrace this, and they did it at the, at the various highest executive levels. So it was incredibly impressive to watch that occur, that, that focus on customers and, and helping solve for their problem set. Well, and I think what Dell got excited about is that when we, we started looking at this particular option, recognizing that the technology was there and that a partnership with Keyless was possible, it was just so consistent with the core values and beliefs of Dell that's been in place for over 30 years, as I said. I mean, you know, embracing this type of disruption, giving customers choice, you know, making the complex simple, and we all know that, you know, for many, many years, you know, networking has been kind of the, the black box. It's been the most challenging for disruption and for change. Uh, but the technology and, and the software now with companies such as Cumulus, uh, you know, we, we, we give that option and we give that support uh, to the customer as, as, uh, as part of their SDBC plans and, and trans transformations. And I think that comment about black box is really important. I mean, the networking industry has been, you know, uh, mired in this mystification of the network for so long, and things have been so complicated, and it has been termed a black box by many. So I'm wondering, JR, when you think about that black box environment, um, are, are there some emerging and important characteristics of software and system providers that, you know, would be able to enable the software-defined data center? Yes, um, I'd like to, to answer your question, but unfortunately I'm going to break it up into two halves. I mean, w one of the halves is the black box part, and, and it's a recognition of history and then the reality of the modern world. You know, I've been around this, this business for a long time, and in, in the very early days, we, we had to invent almost everything. We invented the protocols, we wrote the software, we, we did the chips, we built everything downstairs. Um, those days are gone. The, the technology that, that existed, even at the the, the tier one networking suppliers uh, products, the hardware technology is very consistent. Much of the software technology is consistent. And so that has created a, a, a pivot point in the technology ecosystem, which leads to the set of characteristics you were just asking about. Um, when you look at, at software providers in the software defined data center, they have to be nimble and able to peer with other people in that ecosystem. Um, I'll give you a, a really simple example around uh, something like configuration management. Uh, there are a, a whole slew of, of kind of classical tools that people use for configuration management, and there are new ones that emerge on a reasonably regular clip. And so being able to integrate with these people and peer in, in a very agile and fast way to, to, so that customers that have chosen have chosen solution are able to leverage it in their operations is incredibly important. When you look at system providers, they have almost that same characteristic. They need to be able to create an environment where a software world can revolve around them, but then leverage the, the, the systems that they're shipping to customers. You know, again, I hate to harp on it, but this is exactly what Dell has done in this environment. They've, they've taken their hardware platforms, made them available, get them to customers, and they've created a, a mechanism so customers can acquire and leverage a whole set of solutions through Dell um, with the, the backing of, of Dell, the support structure of Dell, and the kind of the longevity of Dell. Yeah, I mean, JR, this is Tom, I agree with you. Um, you know, the, again, it's been the history of Dell to give that, that choice and to embrace the technology evolution which allows that choice. 
And I'd say, you know, our approach to this uh, is obviously we're going to continue to build, you know, a full stack, and we'll have our own software solutions, you know, not just in networking, but in other areas of, of technology as well. As we look across Dell solutions uh, and the other areas of Dell, but but to also have an ecosystem of partners to meet the customer needs and requirements. And you know, if we look at software defined and even our approach to network virtualization for carriers, it, it's what we call an open ecosystem where we will embrace the innovation that's occurring in this space from various software players, bring them on, test it, and then offer it to customers, you know, we're not going to necessarily tactically select who and who cannot participate on the Dell, you know, uh, the Dell engine, so to speak. We, we want to work with our customers. You know, Dell, we said it a few weeks ago in, in our conference in Austin, we have over 2 billion customer conversations on an annual basis. So we listen to our customers and, and they want to have flexibility. Uh, they want to meet the requirements of their particular environment, and Dell is here to support them uh, for, by providing that ecosystem of, of partners. Um, and, and you mentioned the, the common orchestration and configuration. I, I think this is the one that we've actually seen benefit in a few of our joint accounts, by the way, where uh, we have had customers that are now using more common compute orchestration configuration tools not just with compute, but now with a Dell Teamless solution, which in their words gives them an incredible amount of capability as far as you know, speed to roll out applications or new services for their customers. Uh, and that's, that's a tremendous OPEX savings from that perspective. Right, and so when you look at these various solutions starting to come together where you, you're beginning to have a common server and, and networking management and perhaps even deployment model, you really begin to, to be forced into an era where you have to be open. And so this, this whole open ecosystem is, is very important, right? So, so when I think about this, Tom, the enterprise itself has, has really been this last bastion, if you will, of what we might call highly engineered solutions, or some may even call it like something like a single vendor blob. So when you think about that, are you noticing trends or behaviors that that hint toward a, a fundamental changing mindset? Oh, I, absolutely. And, and I think this is one of the reasons, or one of the many reasons why we embraced uh, this open networking strategy is, you know, customers are, are almost demanding change. Uh, they're, they're tired of, of kind of being locked in or having, you know, only a certain amount of choices. Uh, and, and that's what has started organizations such as the Open Network User Group or OCP. I mean, these are being driven, you know, obviously we're all as, as vendors or suppliers, you know, providing participation and contributing in one form or another. But I, I think that there is a, a, a bigger wave of people that are demanding change. And it's what we call in Dell called the future at EIT. I mean, you've had cloud providers, uh, particularly in the public cloud, that are providing real-time services, you know, dynamically to their connected users. Uh, and, and then you walk into a traditional enterprise, and you're not getting that level of service. And, and the users are saying, you know, why not? And if you don't fix it, we're going to go elsewhere. Uh, and I think the, you know, the CIOs, the IT departments are recognizing this. Uh, and I think that's why SDDC and solutions such as the ones we offer are great choices for customers because it gives them that flexibility and capability to, to, to ride the technology waves, to embrace the latest in innovation, potentially coming from multiple companies, and to be supported by you know, companies such as, as Dell. Uh, so I, I certainly see a wave, and I, and I think it's being driven by the enterprises now, particularly in large enterprise in certain vertical markets. But you know, as, as we say in Dell, our goal is to embrace it and to accelerate that excitement and innovation uh, in the enterprise space. And Jerry, when you think yeah, about this idea of the future ready IT and the flexibility and capability it, it enables. And what are your thoughts on, on this idea of uh, these highly engineered solutions? Well, if you look historically in, in IT, and actually kind of collectively in almost every industry that involves technology, um, highly engineered solutions come about because of a, uh, a, a moment in time where a, a large amount of call it invention has to be done. And some of these way out ahead, they, they do a phenomenal amount of uh, innovative systems engineering, and they put a, a solution on the table. 
And then typically what happens is people start to understand what it means to make that happen, and, and it moves forward. And as the technology matures, you start to see consolidation around what the, the final set of choices are, and things become simpler, and they can move at a faster pace. Uh, and an example would be the, the TCPIP protocol that we, you know, since we're all networking nerds here, um, you know, when I started in networking, it was not a given that TCP was going to be the dominant networking protocol at, by any means. There, were, there was massive debate about whether that was going to happen or not. Um, and nowadays, it would be blasting me to make a statement that something other than TCP makes sense. Clearly, we'll invent something new someday, but today TCP makes sense. And so once you get that simplification, you're able to manage it at, at a massive scale. Um, and you look at the engineered solutions around networking and compute in enterprises, they've been buying them from vendors for a while now. And, and you can see some of, the, some of the other like networking companies are starting to get into servers and create additional highly engineered solutions, trying to garner the whole customer mind share, or in some cases they call it share of wallet. The problem is, is new technologies are coming out of the industry in silicon and optics and power supplies. And in these highly engineered solutions, you can't take advantage of them. They're locked environments controlled by the vendor at the pace that makes sense to the vendor that they can actually deliver on, as well as at cost structures that the, the vendors can make a lot of profit on. So what's happening in the enterprise is they're, they're watching environments where their peers are gaining more and more capacity, whether it's compute capacity, storage capacity, or network capacity, and they're recognizing, you know what, I have to get away from these highly engineered solutions. I have to move into a more flexible, malleable ecosystem so that I'm able to get capacity that at least matches my peers, if not exceeds my peers, in a timely, in a timely fashion. So that kind of speaks to Tom's you know, future-proof IT is the part of being future-proof means not locking yourself in so that you can take advantage of the latest technology as it comes to market. Yeah, I mean, I'll give, you know, a popular buzzword of you know the Internet of Things, right? We're we're, we're connecting so many different uh, items, mobile devices, tablets, PCs, you know RFID, uh, all, all kinds of things to to the network, which is collecting a massive amount of information. So we're collecting all this. What are we doing with this? How are we analyzing it? Uh, how are we turning it around and getting it to the users? I mean, if we continue down a path of a proprietary, locked-in, you know, physical world of networking, uh, we're going to not allow IT departments, users to benefit from the, all of this connectivity, all the data being connected. You've got to be able to, to, to roll out these types of services very, very quickly. And so you know, we kind of line it up into customers today have, have two choices. They can, they can go down kind of the software-defined data center path where it gives them flexibility, choice, uh, working with particular suppliers that you know, are saying standardize on your hardware, use open-based, commodity-based hardware, pick your selection of software. That gives you a capability to ride the wave of technology changes over time. If you go down you know, some of our competitors' view of what I think is still kind of a hardware-based data center, uh, I think we have a, a challenge that says it still locks you in. It gets you in a position where you probably can't make uh, dynamic changes real quickly, probably for the three, five, seven years. And in some cases, it's going to tell you you've got to rip and replace today even some of the infrastructure you have. So you know, again, I think the timing is, is, uh, is, is great timing for the opportunity to make that change. And, and the, the choices for customers are between flexibility and agility and, and being open or continuing to lock yourselves in you know, to five to ten year strategies with kind of a combination of somewhat proprietary software, but definitely continued proprietary hardware. So you guys seem to be suggesting to some extent that uh, these highly proprietary solutions are, are more uh, manufacturer or vendor driven, obviously, than being customer focused. I, you know, from my perspective, yes. I mean, again, you know, we're talking to a lot of customers, 2 billion customers on, on an annual basis, we estimate. And you know, right now, as a, as a, private, a private company, you know, as we've said, 100% of our focus is on our customers and our partners and listening to them. And, and this is why we made the change we did in networking and we're adopting you know, the open uh, networking approach you know, uh, in, the, in the software-defined era because that's what customers are asking us to do. If they want us you know, 
to continue down a proprietary path, you know, that, that just doesn't seem to be the right way to go at this point in time. Yeah, I mean, Larry, you asked a question about vendor-driven solutions. You know, the, the classic thing is when, you know, Gillette invented the, these razors, right? They would sell the, the, the handle for almost free because they knew they could make money off the retail. It's, it's, the same was true class, you know, in the classical model around printers. People made more money off the retail cartridges than they did the printer. And the reason that was the case is because they had a, a, an, a fully engineered solution that only worked from a single vendor. So the customer changing on the customer's uh, for, for the customer to change, it became very, very hard in all dimensions. And that's what we're starting to see the enterprises recognize is that they, by, by being able to change, they're able to get their suppliers to work for them as opposed to them working for their suppliers. Absolutely. And, and, and when you think about this and, and going this whole new direction, JR, what are, maybe, what are some of the use cases for this type of environment? What are you seeing be deployed in the enterprises today as it relates to this uh, open networking movement as, as, as it's found its way into software-defined data centers? Yeah, so from our standpoint at Cumulus, we've, we have a, a lot of success with people that have web-facing businesses, ho hosting-type environments, um, web services-type businesses. Um, in the enterprise, the, the, the deployments that we're seeing the most are, are kind of virtualized environments, whether it's a vSphere thing or, or in some cases an OpenStack proof of concept or even OpenStack deployment. And then we're seeing a reasonable amount of work around the Hadoop infrastructure where people want to put together a super high capacity big data solution and they want to be able to allow it to, you know, to be, be deployed in a cost effective way as well as scale to, to very large scale um, in a cost effective way as well. You know, when, you, when you think about something like Hadoop, the, the fundamental premise of it is that you should be able to store phenomenal amounts of data in a very inexpensive way and then access that data in a very, with very malleable patterns but also in a very inexpensive way. So it, CapEx actually really does come into play when you're building out a big data cluster because it, it, it affects that fundamental cost structure of the data you're mining. Yeah. So I would agree with, with those particular use cases in, in what we've seen. I mean, we have a, a group of web tech cloud customers that I think have been looking at this either with their own orchestration or hypervisor kind of capabilities, and they're, they're looking to, in essence, do more of their own programming uh, from their perspective to make dynamic changes without you know, shutting them down the network and their, their users. Uh, I think we've also seen a lot of use cases in, in the university side uh, in some enterprise side when it comes to, uh, as JR mentioned, uh, you know, virtualization. So that's why we have the relationship, for example, between Cumulus, uh, VMware, and, and Dell as well, giving customers that capability with, uh, with VMware's NSX controller uh, with our top of rack switching, or customers looking to see how they can virtualize the network. And then with that, provide almost a level of multi-tenant kind of capabilities with different levels of security, quality of service, and so forth. You know, I, I, we recently had a, a, an announcement with a common customer called Medallia, which is a uh, software as a service company in Northern California that literally at times has hundreds of thousands of connected users as they provide customer relationship management services, uh, particularly to the hospitality vertical market on a real-time basis. Uh, and they were really looking to, to find a way to to expand their services on a real-time basis and, and really have a common set of orchestration and configuration tools uh, between compute and networking and storage. Uh, and, and to be honest, we originally weren't considered as a networking uh, provider at Medallia until we made the announcement with Cumulus at where there was some discussions with, with Cumulus, I believe, and Medallia up front. But Medallia had that concern about, do I have a single throat to choke? Do I have a big brand to stand behind me and allow this to happen? Uh, and Dell stood up, and, and basically now we're providing them the solution that they want, which is giving them the capability to, in essence, manage both their compute and their networking using Puppet, using common Linux tools, where now basically, basically their business ops team is doing all of the work rather than having different silos of teams that are having to orchestrate you know, a box for the network, and then another set of teams that are doing their compute and their business operations. So 
real cost savings both from a CapEx standpoint, but also more importantly from an OpEx standpoint in the case of Medallia. Great. Now, when I think about this, it's been a, a great dialogue, but I, I've got to believe the audience may be wondering, where do I find additional information regarding these topics? So we prepared a few resources for you. First of all, we have uh, two partner pages where we have Dell and Cumulus information related to this entire net open networking movement. And, and these URLs are displayed here for your review. Secondly, we'd love to have you follow us on Twitter. So we listed our Twitter handles here for our corporate accounts. And finally, if you can't wait to get started test driving our joint solution after hearing this uh, engaging dialogue, we have a remote workbench available to you. The link's here in the middle of the page, pretty straightforward, hopefully uh, simple enough to, to be remembered. So feel free to sign up and take us out for a spin. So hopefully you've learned a few things today about modernizing your data center, and perhaps you've even been inspired to consider new technology solutions for your data center environment. So I want to thank Tom and JR for their insights and candor, and I want to thank you for joining us today. Great. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, JR. And thank you, Larry. We're out of time now. Thank you, everyone, for your participation. We hope you found this presentation about open networking and the software-defined data center useful. Please tune into our next uh, webinar on December 10th, Accelerating SDN Applications with Open Source Network Overlays Featuring Open Contrail. Or join us each Thursday for Coffee with Cumulus, an introduction and product overview of Cumulus Linux. Details are available on our website at cumulusnetworks.com slash webinars. Thank you everyone for your time today. <laughs>